Heavenly Father, we recognize your presence this morning, and yet, how shall we approach thee, Lord, and what way shall we recognize thee? We recognize you as King of kings and Lord of lords, and yet that date is a little time off ere we crown you King of kings and Lord of lords. But we recognize you above all, we believe, as that one who came down, even as you came down to Albany because the work was too important to trust somebody else to it. And now there is a time you cannot trust another, but you trust only in yourself to come forth to bring your bride out of Babylon to get her ready, Lord, for the resurrection, which resurrection shall take place. And a bride, Lord, shall be immortalized because of you. So, Lord, we honor you this morning and we pray that as the, we listen to the prophet's word, Lord, which we shall study, that we shall honor you even further because we know this is what you came to do to bring us a shout at this particular time, which is the message, which is true church order. Help us to be one with your word in this difficult passage that Brother Branham talks about concerning the bride, that we may see the truth and not be carried this way or that, but be carried strictly with it. And we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now we're at number 21, and we covered a little ground last night, not a great deal. But anyway, last night we came to page 38 in paragraph 160 to find Brother Branham is now speaking in terms of the true bride church that is without spot or blemish, and which church is to reign and rule with Christ a thousand years in the millennium, wherein he said, Jesus sits on the throne of his father, David. Now, since he spoke in such detail in describing the Antichrist church, he now wants to speak concerning the true church, which is the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, <clears throat> to do this, we're going to go back to the middle of paragraph 159 on page 38. And he says, and the kingdom of the Antichrist will be taken and destroyed. And Christ shall take the throne and sit upon the throne of his father David and reign upon the earth for a thousand years and then present the church to God without spot or blemish. Now, the next paragraph says, now notice the bride's long hair Nazarite vow. And of course, that's one phrase. He's not just saying notice her long hair, which is a Nazarite vow and so on, but it's a long hair Nazarite vow, which means there's hyphens in between it and it's uh, in italics or inverted commas. Now notice her long hair Nazarite vow to the word. So what does long hair then signify? It's a type of dedication to the word which means a union to the word, which means a faithfulness to that union, which is literally a wedding, a union of Christ the word to the bride the word. Now he said, I want to picture the bride of Christ. We picture the Antichrist where she is, religious and everything scientific, or religious and everything scientific. You could read this different ways, but I suppose I read it the right way the second time. She's religious and everything scientific. In other words, <clears throat> something is brought out in the realm of a knowledge with which you can deal due to a physicality. Now, anything which is beyond the physical is called metaphysical. 
and you're looking at uh, what they might term as an essentiality, if there is such a thing, beyond the physical, but when you get right down to what is called pure science, which is pure humbug, pure baloney, pure sewage, uh, they do not recognize anything but materiality, and they try to sell you the bill of goods that as long as you can find protein, there's got to be life. Now, that's ridiculous. Protein does not bring forth life. Life demands protein. But it doesn't bring forth life. Life has to have something wherewith it can deal. <clears throat> and so life demands a protein. So now if they find protein on Mars or they find some way it's here and there, if they could even go to the sun and bring back protein, they'd say, well, it has to be life. Well, then they'd say, well, not really, because you see there's extraneous circumstances and this and that. You see, science is pure humbug. Yes, sir. Now, it's the human mind that deals in sciences at the behest of Satan, and the church has gone scientific. And I don't mean Scientology and Christian science and things like that. I mean the church is not capable of dealing with spiritual things, period. <clears throat> That's what we're talking about. Now, the church figures it can, but it cannot. So the church is involved with this education that Satan brought to Eve and to Cain and on down. And But Brother Branagh says, but the little humble bride of Christ just simply believes the word. <clears throat> now, let's face it. The bride is a part of of the world church system until she's called out. So therefore she has been instructed in scientific principles and the knowledge of the world and she isn't a fool. So she's well aware of all of these things so. <clears throat> knowing though within her heart the science is not the answer and materiality is not the answer. Even though you may combine the human soul elements with it and live what is known as a good abundant life and you're your own boss and everything is in control and it's great until you die. That's a lot of hogwash. But they're trying to believe something is there. If this woman has anything on the ball at all, she will know that there's got to be some sort of vindication. Or what's the use of trying to believe? Now, that's not what the church wants to hear. But <clears throat> when you take the context of the church, the true church in Babylon, come out of her, my people, you know that she's got to stand with Paul somewhere. All of these things I was trained in, every single thing they know I know, and I've come out and counted pure, unadulterated manure. How? Come on, don't be stupid. By vindicated revelation. Amen. So, Paul came out of Babylon at his hour. And you know, the word of God actually calls Jerusalem Babylon calls it Egypt, <clears throat> gives it various significant nomenclature that show certain aspects. So Paul came out of his Babylon, and he, and he had the knowledge of the hour which was the philosophy of religion <clears throat> and the highest respect of education, and he said it is manure. Now, why would you call it that? Because it is. The man stood before a God who vindicated himself. And when the finest mind <clears throat> sitting upon the throne at that time, he said, Paul, you are mad. Much learning has made you mad. He said, I beg to differ with you. Amen. It isn't learning. It's a vindicated revelation. Amen. Right. So you see, 
When Brother Branham makes this statement about the, this humble little bride just believes the word, he's not some spellbinder sneaking up on the bride that has enough on the ball to know, hey, I better watch this. There's something there. This is different. This has to be the ministry of Christ's return to earth in the form of the Spirit. Like Daddy Bosworth sat on the same platform in 1953 in December with me in West Palm Beach, and he pulled my coat tail and he said, Brother Vale, I prayed for the ministry of Christ to re for 40 years to return to this earth, and there it is in that man. How did Daddy Bosworth know that? Oh, come on, I'll challenge any theologian smart man under God's high heaven to find in the Bible. He can't do it. You know why he can't find it? Because when it's in the Bible, he can't even see it. <laughs> Matthew chapter 4, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12 absolutely shows the ministry of Jesus Christ to return to the Gentiles. As Brother Branham said, he's obligated. Where do you find he's obligated? In the Word. He said, I stand behind my word to perform it. He said, I've exalted my word above my name. So Brother Branham, he comes along like a little pussycat, and he fools everybody, and he said, now here, he said, and they said, oh, that, that stupid Kentucky guy, because he had a little ministry, you know. He just had, pfft, there you are. There you are, always the same thing, always the same thing. God give a man something, he's got to blow it. I beg to differ. There are people who don't blow it. Just because Dalian, somebody said he was, <clears throat> he was Elijah, that doesn't make it that Elijah's not going to come. There's where Israel stood. Oh, they said virgin birth. <laughs> virgin birth. We've had a million virgin births. Every time some lousy monk or some dirty dog got into religious situation, he, can, he got a girl pregnant and conveniently said, Oh, the gods came down, and I got a child by the gods. The stupid so-called Christians, and they say the sons of God got in bed with the daughters of men, angels who pressed themselves in, into human flesh and cohabited and brought forth these people. Hogwash. Oh, They're stupid as the idolaters. I'm going to tell you something. I'm looking at the finest minds in America. And chuckle. I count myself as one of the finest minds in America. And I stand with Paul when he said, you are not aware, unaware of these things. And I'm not at all unaware. I've studied the books. <clears throat> I read what the theologians have had to say. I've studied a certain amount of scientific material, which doesn't interest me too much because I'm not scientific minded. I'm more philosophical which could be to my downfall. But when I saw Brother Branham, I, something said to me, if that's anybody you listen to, you better listen to that one. <laughs> Why? Because of what he had. Paul was a vindicated man, and so was Brother Branham. <clears throat> and he said, now, <clears throat> the little bride of Christ, she just simply believes the word. Everybody said, bless God, I believe the word. Not based on that. I believe what he said. And if he missed it, I missed it. <clears throat> yeah. Now, and whoever she is, now it's individuals, not churches, not groups, although they'll form one at the end. I hope and trust there are many sitting present and many listening in. He's on the telephone hookup. And I hope that myself and every one of you are all part of that bride. Then he said, all that's ordained to that will be that because it's their nature. <clears throat> now, what did he say? He said the soul is the nature of the spirit or the person that has a body that is living because remember Brother Branham said the body 
as it's ready to descend from the womb is nothing but twitching muscles and nerves and there is a spirit standing there allowed of God but not of God ready to take in and that baby begins to cry breathing as God breathing out the breath of life so that baby breathing in signifies <coughs> crying that had has really come to life yet there was a life there before that and it is a soul life that if that child was premature that's why abortions are so terrible. I never knew these things until Brother Branham trained us. That's why the anti-abortion and pro-life people are writing the rest are murderers. And I'm sorry that's the way it is. <clears throat> because Brother Branham told that Mormon grieving over his baby that was born prematurely and therefore stillborn, he said, you will meet it in heaven. Now, you theologians and doctors can do what they want about that. I prefer to believe vindication, not some stupid theory. <clears throat> and when you begin to see what the doctors and scientists do, you can't trust them. Yeah. yeah. What about the doctors and scientists used to litamide and all the babies were born in terrible conditions, some without arms, legs, and everything else? <clears throat> what about this woman in America tried to make a name like the doctor in America made a name over thalidomide and so she began to analyze oh, what is that junk in Canada now they, they debarred it here it isn't aspartame it's the other sweetener and so this woman she made out a lot of false documents <clears throat> and the actual truth is you'd have to feed a, about a carload of it to a bunch of rats to kill them but the Canadians didn't sucker for it <clears throat> but America did, and this stupid woman, scientific, in the name of science, fooled the government, the FDA, and everybody else that was going to hurt you, and it doesn't hurt you, and we got saccharin that they have to absolutely say will kill you. Oh, God. Yeah. You want to trust science, you go ahead and be my guest. Gee. We got a good brother this morning. He paid a big price for a heart bypass, and he's still suffering. What about your mother, Mel, with chelation? Fine, eh? Because chelation only costs maybe 70 bucks a treatment for 30, 20, 100 to bypass the cost of 30 to 50 thousand dollars. The doctors got invested about 54 billion bucks in this. So how are they going to let you get off the hook? <clears throat> oh boy. I ain't smart, but I ain't stupid. It's their nature. It's their souls. Amen. He said here, all that's been ordained will be that because it's their nature and the nature lies in the soul, so it gravitates toward it. Let's put a bunch of birds out here. <clears throat> 15,000 birds. And that would mean 7,500 varieties. Would you find one robin mate with a crow? No, sir. Uh -uh. no way. No way. You can even get hummingbirds that are so closely identified that you'd say, well, hey, that's a mate. But he's smarter than you. Yes, sir. Amen. Because the birds of the air, the fowls of the air, <coughs> know the path that they take yes, sir. but man doesn't know because you see he's got an education God didn't educate the birds no, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. he didn't educate Adam no. but the devil came along and educated Eve everything got messed up <clears throat> so he said it's ordained to be that way because it is their nature and the soul gives the nature to it all. Now, he said, see, the word can only recognize the word. <clears throat> now, what is he saying? Is he saying God recognizes us? No! We recognize God. The sheep hear the voice. Amen. So Brother Branham said, hey, <clears throat> a bride has the instinctual now I'm using the word spiritually instinct. The spiritual instinctive power to just reach out and say that's God. And billions will say that's the devil. 
Isn't that cute? The devil <coughs> will not admit <coughs> and indulge himself, or the people rather, <coughs> in letting them catch on that it's the devil. No, the people don't believe that they're worshiping Satan. They don't believe that they got a, <coughs> a, a devil religion. They don't believe that at all. They say it's God. Then when God comes along, the devil said, hey, watch it. That's the devil. Now listen, that's exactly what happened to Jesus. <clears throat> the Pharisees, he said, you are of your father the devil. You are serpent seed. And they said, we're not born of fornication. He said, oh, yes, you are. Well, you say, well, somebody were just jibing at Jesus and say, hey, you're born of fornication. You prove that. Unless Brother Brown has said and nailed it done. <clears throat> I don't go for it. I'll tell you why. Because he said all of Abraham's children are not necessarily, the seed rather is not necessarily children. <clears throat> and they aren't. Because he had a child by Hagar and didn't work. It wouldn't work right down the line. Then there came along Rebecca and the son Isaac, and they were the same blood, because, and they were supposed to be, and they were actually suited to each other, made it, and they brought forth one bad, one good. <clears throat> two, different, two different eggs, two different seeds from the very same people, and she was a part of him. So all right now, <clears throat> we're looking at this here, and it says the word can only recognize the word. So what is that? That is the seed. <clears throat> so you're looking at two things here. He says their nature is what causes it. Then he said, see, word can only recognize word. <clears throat> so therefore, the soul is intrinsically word. Yes, you can't get away, but I read it. Let's not read it to you. Not, I, I'm not a dummy. I may be stupid, but I'm not a dummy. That doesn't sound good, does it? Anyway, listen again, whether I'm here or not. All that's been ordained to that will be that. That's bride. Because it's their nature. And he explains it. See, word can only recognize word. So therefore, your nature is a word nature. And that means you will mate with the word. <clears throat> Hallelujah. What does that mean? It means only the word of God has life. And he said, the words I speak unto they are spirit and they are life, and that cinches it. And Brother Brannan said, nothing outside this message will come to life. And don't you know they will run around the country telling you the Souders who started <clears throat> the uh, uh, Sons of the Prophet bunch. He's the one that's supposed to have said it. And, of course, Brother Brannan came behind mimicking and took up what Souders says. Ray, you know a bit about those things. Study them further. I get lots of phone calls on it, which I'm not going to tell you my source. Don't worry. You don't even know the guy. But he's been a pipeline to me of all the manure that's been going around about Billy Branham being Pentecost and Billy Branham being a son of the prophet and Billy Branham going there. And Billy Branham told me, he said, Lee, I was going to go to their convention. And the angel of God met me at the door and said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to their convention. He said, no, you're not. Unpack your... <clears throat> I've heard all the lies, and you're going to hear more lies about William Branham as time goes on until you wonder whether you should believe it. All right, who spoke back to him? Tell me, who spoke back? A man in the name of thus saith the Lord comes. In Jesus Christ's name, something spoke back. Tell me what it is. If that's the devil meant to fool us, out of one billion Christians and billions of Muslims and everything else, the devil did one rotten job of fooling people. And he ain't the deceiver. He's not even a 10% deceiver. He's not even a 1% deceiver. So I've got no respect for him. He ain't nothing. Amen. Who answered back? You'll hear more and more as time goes on. I keep warning you. Because I get all the input. 
Saturday alone, I had a phone call 6,000 miles away, 1,700 miles away, 2,700 miles away, not to mention the local ones. <clears throat> I get my letters. I know what's going on. Do you think the devil's going to let you off the hook? Come on, come on, come on. Temptation by filth is nothing to what the devil will do to you spiritually. To destroy you and take you away from the things of Almighty God. Listen, he equates the nature <clears throat> to the word. And he said the soul is the nature of the body, which means it gives it that nature to the spirit. And it can only recognize the word. So therefore, if you were word... In other words, what is word logos, the rima that lay in him became manifested being logos, and therefore, if you are a part of him, you are a part and a manifestation, and therefore, you are many logos. As Brother Brandon said, you're messiahs. <clears throat> so therefore, the word calls to the word in order to come to life. It's mating season. Hallelujah. Now, notice, it can't recognize a denomination or a perversion. What is he saying? He's saying the denominations are perversion. Sure they are. <clears throat> yeah, we had a woman there in Norway when we were over there in 1970. She claimed she had some arthritis or something, so she had to cut her hair. Well, she had a husband who wasn't a jackass, as far as I know. But he acted like one because he let her cut her hair when he could have... He could have combed her hair. Come on, what's the matter with men? Are they so macho men? They can't comb their wife's hair and change the babies and do the dishes? I figure I... I'm a part of a man. I've done all that stuff, and I'd do it again. Maybe sat around under the wrong preachers too long. If you saw my jaw set, you saw right. There are certain people I utterly despise. You say, Brother Vail, you shouldn't shut up. You mind your business, I'll mind mine. I despise people like that. God said they end up a lake of fire, so you think God loves them? You don't understand the blood. You don't understand limited atonement. You don't understand anything. I'm not trying to be better than you or anybody else. The thing is this, hey, get with the word of God. Amen. He says denomination is a perversion. And that woman turned around and told my wife, and she's wearing slacks and all. She said, don't you dare tell me those lovely Pentecostal people are not going to make it. I tell her nothing. Vindicated prophet told her. She had enough brains to realize it. No, she cuts her hair. <clears throat> a denomination is in perversion. So therefore, denomination equals perversion. <clears throat> now, a prophet said that. Now, let's find out about a prophet. I hate myself taking all this time, but I love this word. Amen. I don't care if I take a year and a half more on it. I like, see, this is the stuff I like. <clears throat> okay. The book of Galatians. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, literally, Paul is speaking concerning himself because he's talking about remove from him that called you to the gospel. Paul is saying, how come you ditched me? There was a time when you had given your eyes for me, not just a shirt off your backs. Why have you left me? To another gospel, which is not another. <clears throat> There isn't another gospel. There isn't another word. There isn't another anything of God. Because God is one. And his mind is one and his works are one. And we're one with him. <clears throat> so, you got to go to the oneness. Now, but there be some that trouble, you know, S-O-M-E. A lot of them. And would pervert the gospel to Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven. He said, though I, Paul. And the people with me 
or even an angel of God come down from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than which you have heard me teach you, let him be accursed. Now that's a mighty big word. Yes, <clears throat> years and years ago, I opened my mouth and I began, you know, taking pot shots. I guess I shouldn't, but I, I'm not too worried about it. <clears throat> hey, look, they did it in public. Now, with behind closed doors somewhere, maybe I should be a little more cautious. <clears throat> but these preachers preach in public all this rotten damnation, so I got a right to come against it. Amen. And they said, now listen, you should not do that. I said, Brother Branham, well, well, Brother Branham's a prophet. Well, Paul taught Brother Branham, I think Brother Branham might have taught me. Amen. Let him be accursed. Amen. I'm supposed to stand up and say, oh, nice, nice people. Somebody get in this pulpit and tell you junk, and I don't come behind him. <clears throat> then you'll believe that I believe what he believes and you can fall for it. And my job before God is to stop you doing that. Amen. You say, Brother, Brother Vane, you put yourself pretty high. I never put myself high at all. It's my job and I'm going to be judged for it. Amen. Now, if you want to dismiss me and say, well, Brother Vane, we'll let you off the hook. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But God didn't. I'm going to be justified by what I say and, just, and unjustified by what I say. <clears throat> As we said before, say I now again, if any man preach, now there's man in there, it's if any angel or anybody else preach any other gospel unto you, then what you have received by way of me, he's accursed. You say, well, that's God's job. Who do you think is behind this guy? Who do you think he's an ambassador for? <clears throat> Why, you'd put him with the devil. This is a man of God. Now he said, for do I now persuade men or, or God? He said, have I got some kind of persuasion <clears throat> of men? Have I got some kind of thing? No. Do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which were preached to me is not after man, neither received, uh, neither, for I neither received a man, <clears throat> neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he said, you heard of my, my conversion? He said it was a mighty manifested conversion. Well, that's what Paul said. I didn't see it. All right, now, let's go now <clears throat> to um, uh, Corinthians. And it's the first Corinthians, <clears throat> the fourth chapter. <clears throat> Listen, the first five verses. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Now he said, you people, I withstood Peter to his face because he was to be blamed. Right. <clears throat> he said, I set that Jerusalem council in order and they said, Paul, you are right. That's right. Amen. Now he said, I'm going to tell you something. You better get with this. And you better account me, <clears throat> give to my credit, and acknowledge that I am the steward of the mysteries of Christ. Ah, right. so bless God, that was Paul, and God wouldn't do it again. Who said so? John, a scribe, came behind him and faithfully wrote the book of Revelation, which people said, ha, forget it. <clears throat> like Brother Branham's friend said, well, John must have had some hot peppers that night to have a kind of crazy dream like that. That's people. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. <clears throat> I've got the mysteries of God, and I'm going to preach them if I die for it. Yes, sir. Now watch. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of any man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. You can't judge a prophet, and a prophet can't judge himself. That's right. God. Hallelujah. A prophet is a hundred percent absolved before God. That's why he is God to the people. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I said, Brother Branham, judge yourself. Brother Paul, judge yourself. Man of God, judge yourself. Why did you shut up? You'd make a dog puke if you had that attitude. 
You don't believe in an omnipotent God with an omnipotent word with a power that's going to get you. You don't believe in a word that works. You believe in, you're still in denominations if you don't understand me this morning. I'm not pleading for Levi. Who cares about him? Let him go to hell where he belongs. But don't you dare stand before William Branham, the pillar of fire, and say, well. <laughs> this is white throne, brother, sister. You don't believe it. Some of you don't believe it. You sit here, you don't believe it. I don't blame you. It's not your fault, perhaps. <clears throat> You've never understood the judge. You never will. I don't see. I know too much about it. But he that judges me is the Lord. That's right. That's right. Brother Branham categorically said a prophet cannot be judged. Here's a scripture. Sure. You can't judge him. No, sir. Sometimes it's hard. <clears throat> I'm going to say it again so people will get mixed up again. So the women will run home and phone their preachers if they got one and lie as usual because they will lie. They're doing it in Africa, and they'll twist it again. But I'm going to tell you again. For years, I studied under men like Dr. Bosworth and Aarons and those compatible with him, <clears throat> who forcefully taught that the bride goes through the great tribulation. And believe me, scripture by scripture, they do go through the tribulation if you don't have a revelation. Amen. Amen. I sat with Brother Branham for roughly maybe close to an hour. <clears throat> we banded the scripture back and forth till the room began to get dark. I caught it right away and I said, Brother Branham, look, I can't follow it. I've maybe studied too many years too long. Can I ask you one more question? Certainly, Brother Branham, always gracious, always delightful. I said, Brother Branham, is it thus saith the Lord? Now listen carefully because you're hypocrites if you go different what I'm saying. And you're liars, and you're sitting here wanting to be liars. Sure. And that goes for the tape any place in the world, and I'm saying it. I said, Brother Branham, just forgive me. I can't catch it. But is it thus, saith the Lord, the bride does not go through the great tribulation? He said, Brother Vale, it is thus, saith the Lord. Now listen, Brother Sister. I said, thank you, Brother Branham. I believe you. The bride does not go through the great tribulation, and I will find it in the scripture. Ten years later, by revelation, I found it. Amen. But I believe from that moment. So don't go out of here saying, Lee Vale and Brother Branham differed, because that's what they say around the world. And they're liars, and they know it. Sure. Amen. So you're not going to call my bluff on the word, Brother Sister. Not on what the prophet said. Here, <clears throat> now listen, you cannot judge a prophet. You cannot judge the word. There is no way you can do it. Now, <clears throat> let me show you something. Who cares where the time goes? It's all part of eternity, and this is the best part of eternity on earth we're spending. So, 2 Thessalonians, that's where I want to stone. 2 Thessalonians is the second first chapter, and it says here at the end time, <clears throat> here it says, When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Now we know that is to be the truth. That is the truth. Now that's the end time message. Over here we read in Romans, and this is a tough one. I might not be able to find because I maybe can't put my finger on it. Oh, yeah. Now it says in verse 5 of Romans 2, those who, who could not take Romans 1, <clears throat> they took and said, well, that was in their day. We're going to be different. But now watch what it says in, in Romans 5, one, 2 and 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Okay, now you turn to Hebrews, <clears throat> the fourth chapter, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and a joint and marrow, and as the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom he hath to do. When? In this hour. So, what I'm telling you is this. 
William Branham was the definitive prophet Elijah in this hour. He restored the word. He cannot be judged, and it's vindicated to be so because God read every man's heart in his presence. And that's the day the judge came down when he exonerated the bride and condemned the church. Amen. Said, I indict what? Not the church, but this generation. Amen. He brought it out in full truth. Now, here's where we stand. <clears throat> now, she cannot recognize perversion, which is denomination. It knows better. It's a word. See, it can't recognize anything else. Now, watch. A wheat can't be anything but a wheat. It started a wheat. It'll head up a wheat. Jesus said, I came from God, and I go back to God. And he did it. And Brother Branham said, Jesus came exactly as we came, except he did not bypass a theophonic form. Amen. So therefore, we came from God. We are going to go back to God. Amen. And you cannot go back unless you have God essentiality in you. Right. Because Jesus was the essential God as as to Godness in the Godhead. He was not God. He was the Son of God. <clears throat> when God said, This day have I begotten, He said, This day have I started my genealogy. This day have I started my sons and my daughters. And the Bible distinctly says, By Paul, every one of us was in Him. From before the foundation world. In other words, before there was a speck of anything, that our lives <clears throat> in Christ separated and turned out like sperm <clears throat> would unite with material, which is protein and the elements, to bring forth a body commensurate. Now, this may blow your mind entirely, but if we came from God in that form, and the Bible distinctly says that we are going to be a fashion after our progenitor, the Bible does not lie when it speaks of God having hands. Yeah, sure. having eyes and ears and mouths and loins and everything else, not as though he were like us. <clears throat> but within God himself must have been the genetic pattern that he passed on to us, him being life, and the pattern, the omniscience being in him, and the, and the omnipotence being in him. He passed it right on down. Amen. Exactly why Jesus could take our form. Sure. 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 You think a son of God, God, him coming from God, would take on the form of a bird or a duck or a horse or something? No, no, sir. Do you think he'd have taken on the form of a serpent? <clears throat> no way. The serpent was close to man. That's true. So he just took on, what did he do? He took on part of us. Yeah. Yes, sir. The rest went back to pattern. It started to eat an end, it head up a wheat. And a tear can never be a wheat. Yet it's watered by the same anointing, <clears throat> which means... A wolf in sheep clothing. <clears throat> now watch it. A wolf in sheep clothing. What is that? That is a false prophet. <clears throat> what is a sheep in sheep clothing? Now that's a laugh to the world. All the world got a big kick out of that. They say, this man is a wolf in sheep clothing, but that nerd is a sheep in sheep clothing. <laughs> So now with that sarcasm, <clears throat> you are ill-equipped to listen to me. <clears throat> if you, and I laughed at it myself because it's, you know, a wolf in sheep clothing brings forth wolves in sheep clothing. Yes. And a sheep in sheep clothing brings forth sheep in Amen. sheep clothing. Amen. But <clears throat> the wolf in sheep clothing is the child of disobedience, Amen. the right. child of the devil. That's right. And the sheep in sheep clothing is the child of God. Yes, and you don't find a sheep in wolf clothing. No, sir. Uh -huh. You know why? Because he's not at all anxious to imitate the wolf. He wants to be like Jesus, yes, his creator and maintainer, yes, sir. his future home, Praise his everything. 
<clears throat> but you see, the wolf is different. Now then, therefore, the prophet William Branham, like Paul, like Arrhenius, because you go on down, <clears throat> right to Wesley, they brought forth sheep in sheep clothing for their day. Amen. What about our day? That's right. William Branham will bring forth <clears throat> sheep in sheep clothing. Hallelujah. Now, what is the wolf in sheep clothing? <clears throat> he is off the word. What is the sheep in sheep clothing? He is on the word. Amen. What will the word do <clears throat> for the sheep in sheep clothing? It will give him precisely what he needs in order to be in the resurrection of the just and part of that holy city. Yes, sir. Because he's a part of the bride of Jesus Christ, word answering the word. <clears throat> now, what about the end? Turn the light off, eh? What about the end time? When you have got a wolf in sheep clothing. This is what Brother Man said. The tear can never be a wheat, but it's watered by the same anointing. <clears throat> What is it going to bring forth? It is going to bring forth a corrupt but identical looking fruit of the Spirit. Sure. Love, joy, peace, temperance, goodness, long-suffering. Sure. <clears throat> and it's going to bring forth gifts, sure. healing, miracles, tongues, interpretation, faith, prophecy, wisdom, discerning of spirits. <clears throat> Now, where are you at the end time? That's right. <clears throat> what do you want to be dressed in? Do you want to be dressed in fruit? <clears throat> it's your choice. Because the end time, the manifestation is identical. So I'm not against fruit. I'm all for it. I'm not against gifts. I'm all for it. I want to ask you a question. Where did you learn about gifts? Then why don't you go to the Word? If I want pears, I say to the willow tree, Oh, willow tree. I'm a son of God. Now, I want you to give me pears. Well, a tree says, you nerd. Yes, sir. Can't do I don't have pear life. Right. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> you bring me a branch of the pear tree, <clears throat> and you graft it in me, sure. and I will give you pears. Sure. Brother Brown spoke of that. At the end time, the anointing is so close, there's a razor blade difference. <clears throat> I'm not against these things. I'm all for them. But if not according to the word, I'm not interested. Amen. That's right. Brother Branham never took anything away. No, sir. But he said, when this, he said, the life coming up through the stalk, now let's get this flat. The life coming up through the stalk started out of the grave with Luther. Now, you get out there right now, and you see at the time when that ear is actually forming, the bottom of the grain is brown. But there's still life going up. Why? Because he comes up to seven church ages. <clears throat> the life comes up to seven church ages. And the life passes on. But what remains is nothing but the dead hulk, which is the vessel in which the oil was once. Right. So justification is over. Not that we still don't get justified. Right. <clears throat> sanctification over the life has gone up. Not that we still don't get sanctified. <clears throat> the gifts of the Spirit, the life has gone up. Not as though there aren't gifts available. Sure. But you better have the life with it. Amen. 
And you better realize the life takes preeminence over the fruit. Without life, there is no fruit. Without a pear life, there is no pear. Without a dog life, there is no dog. Without God, you don't have life. You're going to hell. You can take your gifts and do what you want or anything else you want. I'm steamed up. My glasses are getting steamed. But I'm not. You think I am because I raised my voice and shouted. No, it's calmness in my heart. I know where I stand. Yes, sir. I don't have to worry about that. All right. <clears throat> We're reading. He said, same water, same anointing. See? But it isn't a wheat. As I said the other day about the tree with the different branches. I forgot that was in here. <clears throat> but I said it, and so it was in my mind. Now, the church started with long hair, the Nazarite vow. <clears throat> what is a vow? It's two people making a covenant. Now, unless the groom and the bride are deaf and dumb, or especially dumb. So here's the dumb groom and here's the dumb bride. That sounds silly, but it's true. I speak now. Can't talk. <clears throat> so, the... We'll just say they're both dumb, not deaf. So the preacher says, do you so-and-so to the groom, do you take so-and-so to so-and-such and such to be your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold and minister this and do that and so on? He, he gives a sign. He hasn't got a word. He's got a sign. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> the sign says, yeah. To the word. That's like the prophet. He hasn't got a mouth. God's got to give him a sign. Then he gives him the word. <clears throat> so we're looking at the bride with her covenant. She can make a sign, do anything she wants. What I'm trying to say is this, it boils down to word. Yes, sir. Exactly. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Now, if this church had a Nazarite vow by long hair that signified that she was one with that word, the groom, <clears throat> it is a covenant of word. Because no matter how she answers back, do you take so-and-so under such and such conditions? Yes, I do. <clears throat> now, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, I don't care what you thought, and I don't care what I thought. We receive the Word. Amen. Yes, sir. So here's what we're looking at. <clears throat> the long-haired vow. Now, <clears throat> when the Word began to be given back to the church, it went through justification, it went through sanctification, but in the restoration of the baptism with the Holy Ghost as a doctrine, now watch it, <clears throat> with the restoration of gifts, it's the first time she cut her hair and put on men's clothing. Now you say what you want, kid, but I'm 76 and I've lived through it. I wasn't even a teenager <clears throat> when they started doing it. Sure. I've come from the horse and buggy to the jet age, <clears throat> to the supersonic age. Sure. And I'm a witness. I don't know the first woman in our town that wore a man's suit. It was a man's suit, period. <clears throat> from there on, it was a takeoff. Amen. I say, bless God, men don't wear those flimsy, flamsy thing like women do with those nice pretty suits on they got them slack suits on so pretty i'm going to tell you brother sister you want to get a jackass you get a mule what is it you get a burrow and a and a mare together they'll give you what you want sure, sure. Yeah. 
Amen. You're slack. I don't care what they're made of. They're a takeoff. <clears throat> I don't care what men trunks are. They're a takeoff. Never mind the material. Don't try to justify yourself because we're looking at the Word of God by a vindicated prophet who cannot be judged. Well, I think Brother Branham made a little mistake there. He made mistakes. <clears throat> didn't make one mistake at all. You watch his life. Didn't make mistakes either. That's where you guys are all goofed up in this marriage and divorce stuff. You think you got engaged. You're married to somebody. And how come Brother Brandon married people, especially one boy I know that had two or three engagements? He said, now you got the right one. He watched the life. He was a pear tree and an apple tree. He looked just alike. As far as I'm concerned, I got to wait for the fruit season. <clears throat> You think a prophet's going to go back in his word? The Bible condemns a man that teaches one thing and does another. Amen. So somebody screwed up, but it's not the prophet. No, sir. Uh -uh. Do what you want. You're smarter than the prophet. You're smarter than anybody. So go ahead. <clears throat> Paul said, he said an example after Jesus Christ. And Brother Brandon said, follow me. People are so near, you don't even know about a Christmas tree. You say, well, that condemns everybody. Does this, does that. You're just a bunch of legalists, that's all. And you're waiting for some little thing to throw you. And, say, and you walk on. say, well, I, that wasn't really. See, it's a make-believer. Yes, <clears throat> I am stuck with William Branham, the same as I'm stuck with David, with 499 wives and had to take another beautiful woman and not only seduce her, but literally rape her, another man's wife, have a baby by her, uh, kill the husband. Well, bless God. The Psalms. Puke on the Psalms. Yeah. I'm trying to rip them out of my Bible. Oh, brother baby, don't do that. Why not? He's a scuzzball. Sure. Dave's a man after God's own heart. I love him. Amen. <laughs> not because of what he did. Not because of what he did. But in the Psalms, I hear a human voice calling unto God. I hear a sheep calling unto his master. Amen. I hear a soul wanting to go back to his source. Amen. I see somebody calling for that which God ordained him, no matter how many devious ways he took and what the path was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. David isn't lost. No, he's still the progenitor of the flesh according to the word of God of Jesus Christ our Lord who one day sit upon his throne. And don't you try to tell it otherwise. Her long hair Nazarite vow shows she's vowed to God, the word. Her beautiful gown of his promised word for the age that she's living in, wrapped around her. Who's her? Vindicating her. Who's her? Soul, nature, <clears throat> with himself. Vindicating her. Her with himself of Hebrews 13 and 8, which Brother Branham invariably went where to? Genesis 18, where God came down and said, The promised son is on the way now. This is it. And Sodom was burning. Amen. <clears throat> and Sarah was in the tent behind the back of God. Right. And he said, You're going to have that son by Sarah. And Sarah said, Ha, 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 me and who else? He said, Sarah, why did you laugh? She laughed up her sleeve like Brother Brandon said, but there's a hole in the elbow. <laughs> so I didn't laugh, I didn't laugh. Aha, he said, but you did laugh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And there at that time, she had just fed God with her husband. Amen. That's right. Think of it. Come on, let's let her hair down. Sure. How do you know that morning when David lusted after Bathsheba, he hadn't been quoting a psalm that God gave him fresh off the top? Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters into green pastures. And his body said, he leads me to beautiful women. Yeah. But he said, I think I'll go with the body. Right. Did that annul the first psalm in the 23rd? <clears throat> I don't think it did. So Sarah laughed up her sleeve. There in the presence of God, she made God a liar. Yes, sir. That's right. Come on. Right. Yeah. She's part of Abraham. Yes, sir. Who do you think you are this morning? Somebody nice? Ha! Huh. <laughs> Gee, I could go to the rogues gallery and find better pictures. <laughs> Amen. 
you could too. Yes. I was saying, I looked in a three-way mirror. I said, oh, Lord, I died. <clears throat> That's the ugliest creature you ever saw. Just like Al Arnett said, I was ugly. My mother had to tie a bone around the, my neck so the dog would play with me. Of course, that's an old joke. It's the truth. Never looked in a three-way mirror again until about 30 years passed. And I looked around and said, oh, the nose isn't so bad. Something caught up. Maybe my eyesight was failing by then. <clears throat> what does it matter? Hey, what does it matter? You either seed or you're not seed. <clears throat> you cannot find perfection in yourself and of yourself. There's only one part of you that came from God and came down by natural generation, as Brother Branham called natural election, and you're stuck with it. Let me tell you one thing. You're a true child of God. You wrap yourself in His Word. Amen. And you'll want whatever comes out of His Word, no matter what it is. <clears throat> you'll want it within the framework of the Word, and you'll look to Him, and you will not be a scoundrel, put it that way. Yes, I still cannot believe in these preachers who taught adultery by way of what they call polygamy. <clears throat> As a man in Europe said, he said, I've done more for this message than any man living. He sure did. He loused it up. Yeah. He's now a doctor of divinity. He's had his women living right under his roof and his wife knowing it. She had to suffer it. So, Brother Vale, just a while ago, <clears throat> you said that look at the man David was. Could this guy be the same? No, he's off the word. He said Brother Brown is wrong and he's right. That's right. That's right. You lift your finger against the prophet, you know just where you are because you can't judge a prophet. His man said, well, you see, I had this dream years ago storing up food, and I went to Brother Branham, and then Brother Branham later on had the vision. I say, oh, that's great, but I have to know Nebuchadnezzar had a dream before Daniel had his vision. Amen. Was Nebuchadnezzar now a great man? Amen. Check your word, brother, sister, check your word. Amen. You want an answer? <clears throat> you may be fooled by people. You can tell I'm not trying to fool you because I go to the word, word by word. I'll stand up here condemned, look, brother, sister. I'm not trying to make myself somebody. If I am seed, I'm seed, and I'll go toward God. If I'm not seed, I won't do it. As she is part of the word groom, true to him in every point, <clears throat> she'll be true to him in every point. <clears throat> now, who's he talking about? Last day bride. Amen. Not first day bride. Doop, 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 doop. He said, there's got to come another Ephesus. <clears throat> We've come full turn now to where the bride was pure. And over here, I read it dozens and dozens of times. It's my, one of my favorite little verses. And you know where I'm going, 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. And he said, for I'm jealous, so we the godly jealousy. I've espoused you to one husband. I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, but I fear you're already messed up in your minds. You become pregnant by another word. In other words, you've got a seed in there like Eve, and it's going to bring forth, because you went to the flesh, away from the revelation, you are going to bring forth a bunch of bastard children. And the church did it. Eve took, I beg your pardon, the serpent took Eve's mind before he took her body. Before he could reproduce himself by her body, he took her mind. And so that's what the church did. Yeah. It's not that these, this bride was a child. They were children of disobedience. They were not. They were children of God. But they opened their minds. But at the end time, the bride will not open her mind. Because this time when she gets pregnant, <clears throat> she'll be like Sarah. Amen. It'll be by Abraham. Amen. <clears throat> and the mind will be closed. Yeah. What I've called a mindset. How are you going to believe opposite to that? You know something? If I had to do it, I'd just sit and look at that picture hours a day if I knew I had to do it to get a mindset and say, listen, that is a picture of God, of a manifestation of God. Put it that way, not a picture of God. <clears throat> it's a picture of a manifestation of God. It's a picture of a theophonic form, which means God uh, shown, God manifested. See on Phanero, God showing. Yeah. Seen upon Mount Sinai, caught by a camera. It's the same pillar of fire or the prophet light. Yeah. 
Oh, you see, I think the prophet lied. Now you're judging a vindicated man. That's right. Yep. And the same people who say they believe Paul, they wouldn't buy this for a billion dollars. They can't. Their head's like a noodle. There's a hole in the middle. Everything goes right through. <clears throat> Doesn't catch anything from God. All right. She is a part of the word groom. <clears throat> Eve was a part of Adam's body. He took a rib out. She was a part of Adam dually. He took that out. So with us, then if he is the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh, then we too are in that. Amen. We're identified. Right. You cannot change it. <clears throat> so, why try to change it? She is part of the word gloom, groom. Who is the word groom? Complete word. Yes. Brother Branham said the prophets were a part of it. Jesus was the whole of it. Coming up through seven church ages, seven messengers, part of it. Today is the whole. Brother Branham, what does he mean? That which is perfect has come. He said, that which is perfect has come. I'll tell you what it is. He said, <clears throat> what is perfect but God? And who is God but the Word? Therefore, by divine revelation, we have the perfect revelation of the hour. Yeah. Headship. Right. Here you are. What time we got? How much? 20. Well... Okay, we'll read this paragraph. 162. <clears throat> now look, if a woman out here is married to a man and she goes out and makes love with another man and has an affair with him and come back to, comes back to her husband, he should kick her out. <clears throat> what about that? Is that right? <clears throat> well, she made a vow. When she breaks her vow, there's no contract. Then she's no longer a wife. If he breaks his, he's no longer a husband. Why is it all put on the woman? Because it's a type. The man, inadvertently, pardon, that's not a really right expression. It's not inadvertent. He's lucky. The man, luckily, is the type of Christ. Will he ever be unfaithful? Oh, come on. <laughs> Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. And he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He didn't live by his own faith in God. He lived by the contract, the oath Amen. between Jesus and the Father. And he's Amen. living by the faithful God. The faithful and true witness. Yes, sir. Not living by anything he thought or anything he believed or anything he did. He said, I'm living by his faith. He is faithful who promised. Right. So you will never find in Scripture as though the man went out and did it. Right. Brother Branham knew it took two to tango. Sure. <clears throat> A woman in London came over here years ago, and she said, Brother Branham, what am I going to do? She said, my husband is running around and running around, women after woman. <clears throat> Brother Branna said, look, he'll give you a social disease. You must divorce him. But you can't remarry. He recognized man as man. But we're typing here. It wasn't Adam who failed. Adam was faithful. He went to her rescue. Amen. Even got her pregnant. What do you think Jesus did? Yes, sir. Went to our rescue and God is pregnant. Amen. Amen. With the word. Amen. The life in that word. Right. So you see, when you talk about a man, you got to go to sources. When you talk about a woman, it becomes terrible. With a man that looks good. But the man's a jerk. Yeah, sure. He ain't nothing. How could he be if the woman came out of him? Right. What was in him? Don't you can't look at the flesh. 
<coughs> you got to look at the Word. See, that's why with me it's always Word, Word, Word. You know why? Because I believe someday this Word in me is going to take life. And if it doesn't, kiss it goodbye anyway. I'm shot. I'm gone. I've been all through the gifts and things. Look, I had a good ministry there. Brother Brand said, Lee, you had a lot of true discernment, but you made some mistakes. Get a waveman. I got a waveman. <coughs> It's, it's, I'm not against those things, but come on, it doesn't take the place of this. No. See? Now, what about a man kicking a woman out? <clears throat> Matthew 25. Those virgins came and they didn't have any oil in their vessel. They ran around looking for it. It was too late. The door was shut. And watch what it says. Afterward, the other virgins came, verse 11, say, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he said, I used to know you as my wife, but I don't know you as my wife anymore. Amen. Literal translation, Dr. Hoyer gave it to me. <clears throat> greatest Greek student of the 20th century. Taught by Dr. Ivan Pannon, who was the greatest. Ahead of him. Not, not even wink at the other side, or a man. A woman should not even wink at another man. She should make no signs, no emotions at all toward him. For she is absolutely a bride to one bridegroom. Amen. Now, you think the bridegroom here is going to, hey, wink, baby, hey, baby. Hey, Bathsheba. Listen, David was only a type. The prophet is only God to the people or as God. He's not God. <clears throat> but we're talking in types. She's absolutely a bride to one bridegroom. We don't want any of your mixed trees, your denominations. Mrs. Methodist, Mrs. Baptist, Mrs. Zone, 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 Zone. See, what you want here then is a true woman. True loving marriage. Amen. And when she's got a true loving marriage, she isn't going to be enticed. No, sir. That's right. Why do people get enticed in religion? Because they're not happy with what they got. Amen. You think I'm going to go back to Pentecost? Hey, I tried Pentecost from a kid up. I went with the Methodist. Not well, I was a Methodist as a kid. A combat, I was a hybrid. Pente I was a Presbyterian Methodist and called the United Church of Canada. Crazy bunch of jerks into politics. Denied the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Press the minister's daughter said she said she had I was under her control because I was 16. And she was my teacher in high school. And she said, Well, she said, you know, the book of Genesis and the Bible, that's just mythology, you know, like the Greeks and the Romans and the Norwegians. And I thought, well, she ought to know she's the preacher's daughter. Then God came on the scene. And I knew Hallelujah. she was a scuzzball with her dad. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Brother Vade, you talk mean about people. Hey. They would have destroyed me, stupid. That's right. That's right. Come on. Give me credit for having an ounce of brains. <clears throat> A proper marriage isn't going to dissolve because he loves her and she loves him. And what is he? The word. Oh, Brother Vale, don't talk that word, word, word. Well, he's the word. 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 And I can't talk word without talking about him. And I can't talk him without the word. Because that's all I know. Amen. Said Brother Bale, I didn't see that. It never talked to me. I sat there in the room in the pillar fire, prayed upon the wall. And he said, Lee, do you see it? And I said, no. But I see the man that sees it. Amen. What do I need to see all the rest? Sure. Psh, come on, brother, sister. Fiddle de diddle. <clears throat> She's no, no signs. We don't want any dominations or mixed trees. Be true to Christ, the Word. He'll vindicate it to be true. <clears throat> what I, what's this hour we live in? I'm closing now because I know the time's run out. Malachi, second chapter. I beg your pardon, fourth chapter. And it says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, all that are proud, the, the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. That's the cane. You see the cane bunch. And the day that comes shall burn them up. That's the serpent seed, said the Lord of hosts. Leaving neither root nor branch. Hey! You know why there's neither root nor branch? Satan didn't have a root in heaven like Jesus had. He blew it. <clears throat> he didn't have the root there. So he's not going to have us all burned up. But you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness rise with immortality in his wings and you'll go forth. And grup his calves in the stall. Where's that millennium? Further sanctification. Say, Brother Bill, what do you mean? I don't know what I mean. The prophet said it. Do I always have to have the meaning? 
don't have to have the meaning. He said, for the sanctification. He said, praise God, I need it. I want to tell you one thing. I know I am not ready for New Jerusalem. But I can get ready. I'm not ready to eat a big gallon of ice cream, but I could get ready in a hurry. You bring on the right flavors. <laughs> and I'll forget my sinuses. Amen. They might not forget me, but I'll forget them. I got a marriage. I'm a wordaholic. Amen. True to Christ. You'll vindicate it to be true. <clears throat> what is he saying here? He said, the word for this hour that you're wrapped in, which is immortality, which is an inner vesture, which is a vestment, which places you Amen. as bride, he's not going to fail. Amen. That's it. He's not going to fail. He's not going to fail. You see why you got to have faith in his faith, not your own? <clears throat> not even the faith he gave you because, hey, look at all the world out there is claiming the same thing. And listen, they can talk sovereignty better than you and I ever thought of it. The scholars out there are smart. So forget it. Just have faith in his faith. Have faith in his contract with the Father because the Father came down to put the church in order and put everything under his feet. And one day he's going to raise the dead and change you and me, and he's going to take us there. And you know why we know it? I talked about it last night on foot washing. Yes. Because he said, you call me Lord and Master. You recognize me, so I recognize you too. Amen. That's right. Yes, sir. <clears throat> foot washing is emblematic of the fact that he recognized us and put us right in it. Yep. And we recognize him. Yep. You see, the sheep, Hear the voice and they follow. Let's rise and be dismissed. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for what the prophet gave us. Thrills our soul with gigantic waves swirling in upon the dry beaches of our soul. Watering the sea, giving us joy, giving us exaltation, enlarging happiness, and yet concentrating it right down to an atom that could explode and then reconstruct itself into eternal, immortal flesh. We praise you, God, for your kind love and mercy. Praise you for the word that you gave to a prophet that cannot be judged. Only God can judge. We know that just like you judge David. Oh, Lord, it's wonderful to know that you are the judge. And it's wonderful to know that the sheep hear the voice. It's wonderful to know identification. It's wonderful to know it's word going to word. That it's nature going to nature. And it's all laid out here and there's no more mystery left to it. Well, I know people want some big explosion, Lord, some big emotion, some this and that. But you never said she had that. You just said she stayed with her contract, the word, and her long hair and Nazarite vow. Oh, God, I believe today there's a beautiful woman called the bride because there's a beautiful man called the bridegroom. And I believe, Lord God, somehow, I don't know, somehow I know that by your grace you allowed man and woman to type it. And we see the sin out there, women undressing, men undressing, men having long hair, women having short hair. Hey, look out there, we see that, that, that thing, the milieu of the church, which is insidious and rotten. They call it God, completely fooled by the devil. But we've awakened unto righteousness, as Paul said, Awake thou the sleep, and rise amongst the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And whatsoever maketh manifest is light. And we've seen it today, that your Hebrews 13 and 8, you're Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and forever. You've discerned thoughts of heart. You've brought all things to light and to judgment. And yet men turn it down, but there's a bride that doesn't. God, I'm, I'm identified with that, at least in the understanding. If we are not bride, we are at least then friends of the bridegroom. And we rejoice with him as the strong man that ran a race and is now coming to the finish line to grasp his bride and take her away from this hellhole. Get her up there in the glories. And if we got to die in the meantime, Lord, then it's been a good death and a good race. It's been a good thing, Lord. For whatsoever the Lord doeth it is good. In him there is no shadow of turning. In him there is no evil. And there is no unrighteousness, Lord. And yet you said at the end time of the opening of those seals, the righteous would be righteous still. 
Oh, God, there wouldn't be a change in that seat. There wouldn't be a change anywhere. Walk right to the tree of life, able to do it. Lord, what a wonderful, wonderful thing is here before us. Help your people to realize that. Lord, don't let one sick one be amongst us. So the prophet prayed that I can, I can follow his example. Lord, send your sweet spirit amongst us. People get caught up in that sweet spirit of Christ, that beautiful life within the Word, not our own lives and our own judging and all this junk that is so foolish and so <coughs> insipid, so infantile, but in full maturity know the truth of Melchizedek in these things. Lord God, your sweeping power amongst us. Gifts as it were on the shelf, not thrown out, but as it were on the shelf. Sweet Spirit, heal every single one amongst us. No more hide or hernias in the place. We've got a bunch of them here this morning, Lord. That's not in your word. No, sir, that's a travesty against your word. That's a discrepancy. That's something the devil's doing, not you, Lord. God, you, you said you made the mouth to speak, the eyes to see, the ears to hear, then you made the diaphragm to breathe and not get full of holes and things. I believe it, Lord. And I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for all the other things you do for us. Above all, Lord, you clothed us with your word in the inner man to give us garments of light and white and to come forth, Lord, into the millennium for further sanctification. Oh, hallelujah. What a, what a tremendous thought the prophet brought us. I don't, I don't judge it. I just love it. A further sanctification. Man, thrills my soul, Lord. I don't get it. Somebody else will. Thou art great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.